where the monsters will get us. The trailer for A Quiet Place 2 just dropped not that long ago, and to be honest, I had never seen the first movie, although I did hear good things about it. I'm happy to say that overall, I absolutely enjoyed the movie, with one caveat about the way that it ends in connection with the way they establish the monsters, which I'll talk about in this review. What I want to do is I want to discuss three aspects of this movie. First, I want to talk about the directing here, which is done by John Krasinski. Secondly, I want to talk about the acting that takes place in this film as well. And finally, I do want to talk a bit about the ending of the movie as it relates to the way they established the monsters. So, make like your favorite librarian and shh, the person next to you. It's time to talk about A Quiet Place. Okay, so let's talk about the directing here, which is done by John Krasinski, a.k.a. Jim Halpert from The Office. Yeah, that guy. Here's my best gym impression. Now, this is not Krasinski's directorial debut. In fact, he has two other longer pieces of media to his credit. One being The Hollers, and two being Brief Interviews with Hideous Men. Both of which I've never seen, nor have I ever heard of prior to doing some research for this review. So... If you have seen any of them, let me know. Are they any good? Now, I take away two things from Krasinski's directing in A Quiet Place. One, he still does have, you know, plenty to learn in terms of creating, I think, a unified vision or, or a unified tone for a movie from beginning to end. There are certain places where it feels almost like the movie's cut up in such a way that you're almost, you kind of, what's wait. What just happened? My The tone or the feeling of it just shifted a little bit here in an odd way. And that's fine. He'll get better at that the more chances he has to actually direct in these types of, of movies. But on the good side of this, I thought Krasinski did a wonderful job with one particular aspect of this, and that was framing. Now, me personally, I think that this film has been mislabeled in terms of its genre. It's been called, even by Krasinski himself, as a horror film, but it's really not. And believe it or not, I'm actually saying this as a compliment to Krasinski here. Horror films are much easier to do in terms of getting away with certain things with the audience, right? Certain tropes, you know, things, uh, you know, the screaming woman, the dragging away of a person, the jump scares, the music. You can rely on a lot of things in order to create a fairly successful horror film. But this movie to me is much more akin to a thriller, and that's much more difficult to actually create a successful version of a thriller than it is a horror film. Now, I say that this is a thriller precisely because the way Krasinski frames the shots and because he can't rely on audio in the same way that a horror film can. And Krasinski does a masterful job of manifesting or creating drama simply by how he positions his actors as the focal point. So for example here, he very rarely has more than one or two human beings in any given shot. And I can only really think of maybe two places where you have the entire family at the very beginning, and then at another point, you have the entire family together, you know, at at the dinner table, that kind of a thing. But most of the time, it's one or two human beings with a large amount of space around them. And what that space creates is a very oppressive environment. But oppressed by what? That's the question. For much of this movie, the monsters are not really there. And the more space that you create around those focal points, the more more upset 
you are as the human being because we can't immediately see what is oppressing them. And yet you can feel it in the environment that the monsters are there. They're waiting for you to just slip up and you know, make that sound or whatever. And so you create a tremendous amount of drama by the sheer fact that the human being is right there on the screen with all this empty space where there is no monster, there's nothing there. And yet you are completely vulnerable in that space, that large space. It's a wonderful job by Krasinski in that way of creating a kind of thriller atmosphere. Now, something else that I really enjoyed about this film is the nuance of movement. It would have been really easy for a young, inexperienced director like Krasinski to only give specific movement instructions in particular scenes. So, for example, he could have simply said, I want you to be extra stealth, you know, extra careful when we're shooting a scene where a, a monster is in an immediate vicinity. But that's not actually the case. Even when the monsters are not around, I picked up on the idea that the signing that the actors did, and I do not know American Sign Language, so if I sign something that's horrific, please forgive me and know that it was completely by chance. The signing that the actors did was actually quite quiet and controlled. The only times that I can recall someone signing you know, very, um, with a lot of force was the young lady, the, the daughter who is signing because she's upset, right? And you would expect that to be done from a young person, a young person who's driven by emotions so much would every so often probably just try to, uh, to buck the system and, and not care and simply say, I'm going to sign my anger, right? But for the most part, the signing it's almost as if Krasinski thought through the idea that even movements make sound in the air. So we want to limit the way we sign or the force by which we sign because one, forcefulness can create more movement, more energy, which usually leads to more sound. And yet, even in the way they sign, you feel that suppression or that oppression that is, being take, that is taking place in that environment. Quite a thoughtful bit of directing there. Now, in addition to the excellent work that Krasinski did behind the camera, in front of the camera, he's also quite good as the father figure. He's not really a brooding character, but he is very much absorbed in what's going on and in a very realistic, meaningful way that you would think that a father might be, which is, I'm going to work on just this and just this alone. And, uh, you know, he's very absorbed in creating the hearing aid for his daughter and whatnot. And that really sets up the true star of this movie, which is Emily Blunt. One of the most beautifully nuanced scenes in this film is when Emily Blunt walks over to Krasinski while he's working on the hearing aid for his daughter and she just touches him in such a way as to let him know, you can't simply be about this. You have to also be about us, about the family, about humanity, about life. And it was a absolutely wonderfully communicated scene by an actress who understood, I have to get this message across without saying a word. And it was done perfectly. Now, the young actors in this film, the children, are fantastic. You know, they can't really hide behind sounds and scary music either, so they're kind of vulnerable up on the screen as well, and they absolutely pull it off. I don't really hold child actors to the same level as I do adult actors, of course. To me, as long as the young actors don't mess up or inhibit the flow, the pacing, or the connection that takes place in the room, then I give them an A+. And that certainly is the case here. Now, I'm going to get a bit negative here, okay, at the end. And I hope it doesn't ruin the fact that I actually really did enjoy this film quite a bit. And I will likely see the second one. Maybe not in the movie theater, but I'll see it eventually because 
I do want to see what happens in to the family unit in the next movie. But let's talk about these monsters a little bit here. I don't have a problem with how they look. I don't have a problem with their immense speed. And I don't even have a problem with the idea that they have a weakness of audio frequency, let's say. What I have a problem with is that I struggle to understand how we as human beings could have lost this war with them. Yes, these monsters are incredibly fast and they seem incredibly powerful as well. So I would imagine that they would probably be able to kill quite a decent amount of us before we could formulate a good enough plan to push back against them. But we do have creatures on Earth who see with sonar, right? I mean, a child, an eight-year-old child with a decent enough wildlife coloring book should be able to see that, oh, it's kind of like bats to a degree. But let's suppose for a moment that we couldn't figure that out, that we really are that stupid as a species and only an eight-year-old girl and her dad with like leftover parts from the last Radio Shack that closed. Let's say that they, you know, for whatever reason, we really do have to wait for like those two to figure it out. Let's forget it. The problem with the ending of the film is that when you can simply blast their head off with a shotgun, it kind of makes me think, well, why wouldn't we just create traps for them then? You know, like in other words, if you think about it, and this makes me laugh because I immediately thought of Wile E. Coyote from the old Looney Tunes cartoons, the old Acme bombs that you would have of course, with the the alarm clock and the sticks of dynamite, you could essentially just create those, you know, old Acme bombs, put them in a in a, a desert space or an open space, and when they go off, they bring the monsters to it and they explode. Certainly, we could create a bomb that is much more uh, uh, destructive than a shotgun to the face. So, how did we lose this? I think it would have made more sense if you couldn't shoot them, actually, right? Like, if they had established that a shotgun to the face when their heads are closed does nothing. And so, first, you have to open up their face to expose the, I don't know, the fleshiest part of their flesh, that that would be the only point that was penetrable for either explosives or, or um, you know, bullets, that kind of a thing. At least then, it would somewhat make sense for why we couldn't kill them. Now, now, before you say it, on the whiteboard of, of Krasinski's, you know, when he's doing all his science stuff, he's got his science whiteboard. It does say, I believe, armor at one point. And does that mean that the monsters are armored? Could be. Could be. It could be even that Krasinski was thinking along the same lines of what I'm saying, which is that you have to expose that fleshy part of them before you could shoot them. But, again, I still find it a bit hard to believe that a well-placed bomb couldn't just kill off the majority of them. And if they always come for sound, right, come to the sound of something, it would seem to me to be pretty easy that we could create certain traps to really kill them all. Am I crazy? Am I the only one here who really just kind of thought... That's a bit of a problem. Let me know in the comments below where you stand on this. So what's our silver linings lesson for this movie? Well, the family here in the film is carrying 
a very traumatic burden, which is the loss of their youngest child at the beginning of the movie. And throughout the film, you come to learn that each one, to a degree, is trying to take blame for what happens to that young child. But the beautiful part is none of them will allow any one person to take that blame. The family bears the burden together, and in doing so, they're able to continually move forward. However, there still has to be plenty of healing that needs to happen there, and they will be able to do that. I'm not saying to move on from what happened and forget what happens, but they will be able to move forward together because they bear that burden with each other. And they don't allow any one person to carry it because it's too much weight. It doesn't matter how many people are in your family or what that family makeup looks like or any of that stuff. The wonderful thing in this film is that it shows you the power of carrying burdens and grief together. Because it will also make the first few steps forward that you have to take much easier.